Hello everybody and welcome to this in the kitchen reading. <laughs> I just felt like having fun this week. I'm feeling like I'm ready to get back to, I can't say necessarily weekly readings, but um, that's my hope. Um, I'm really learning to not be so stringent with myself through this process that we're in with being, you know, locked down at home and everything. I just am really honoring when I need to be quiet and take care of myself uh, and when my energy is not in a place that would be helpful to anybody. I think we all go through times where you're, you're in the midst of taking more of a deep dive and you need to let yourself have that time. And that has been me really over the past month, month and a half. Um, so I just say that to everybody to, uh, you know, honor when you don't feel like, rah, you know, taking on the world, being the lion in your life. Or in my sense, um, I love the peacock animal energy. That's what I feel my outer self is like. And I love, you know, to be um, seen in a way that hopefully that I can bring through some words that focus on beauty, um, focus on the love and the, uh, I love, I've got this woodpecker here. It's so meaningful to me because this feels like getting back to work. That's what I always uh, associate the woodpecker with. Um, just, you know, pecking away, doing your best each day. But a piece of that is um, what I'm trying to get to here is, is really that it's okay. You can see I'm stumbling over it because it's still so new to me. I'm not used to not pushing myself. I'm not used to, you know, get up and get to the grindstone and you've got a to-do list and you can't, you can't take your time or you can't, um, you know, have a break in the middle of your work day or those kind of things and all of that has just gone up in the air like a million puzzle pieces um, and I just I'm saying it because I want to encourage everybody to explore these parts of who you've always been this is a perfect time to really think about do I really want to be that anymore um, and I can say for myself that I really do not I don't want to be this nose to the grindstone every freaking minute of my life um, because it, it doesn't help me. It stresses me out. But you don't know that until you slow down enough. And so that even relates to this work, which I love my blue sky shop business that I have. Um, it, there's nothing that lights my heart up like that. I love connecting. When I do these readings, I connect with all of your energy. Anybody who's watching this, time is, is not linear here. We're already connecting. Even people who are watching this far down the road, um, still you are a part of this energy and I love, it's so uplifting. But even that, I've really needed to take a break because I just didn't feel that my energy as a, as a collector of energy, as a channel of all of our really good, beautiful, sunny, blue sky selves, um, that I was in a place to even channel that appropriately, you know? So just, I guess my words for you are, I, I just want you to honor uh, this time in showing you those exact elements that I'm talking about really question whether or not you really need to um, push ahead or whatever it is that you normally do I'm sure you have had to adjust those aspects of who you are and really question do I want to go back to that normal part of me because that is the greatest gift out of this whole thing even with as much tragedy as there has been in the world around this, we have to somehow also look for the gift at the same time. All of those people in my book died in vain if we can't see the beauty of what is being offered to us, those of us who are still here on the planet and getting up every day 
and greeting the start of a new day. It is your chance to create. So with that, I know I sound sort of somber, but I, I feel like I'm coming up out of this period of being really kind of driven into the ground a little bit. And that's in not, not in a bad way, just really kind of getting myself grounded in what maybe feels right, even beginning to question what feels right moving forward. And these are big themes in my life. And I'm sure there are some in yours as well. So with that, um, I really felt I wanted to do a card reading this weekend. Of course, Easter, Passover, all these times of renewal going on right now. That's the energy on the planet is a, is a massive renewal, rebirth kind of energy. And I can't not take that opportunity because I just, I'm loving it. I have... Pluto, the planet of transformation and rebirth, exactly opposing the sun in my astrological chart. So I have great respect for rebirth processes in our lives. Um, and meanwhile, I, I just felt like I really want to be light with this because there's also a part of Easter. Um, that's what I'll speak to because I, you know, am not Jewish, so I don't um, know the details of Passover, but with uh, Easter, it's a, it's a sense of, I just remember as a child, I mean, it was just such a, we would always be outside after, after and before we had dinner and um, as a big family. And it's just, <clears throat> it's a time of like reconnection after the winter and just all this opportunity to be outside and uh, to engage with the earth again and that's the the springiness that I feel like um, and also I'm remembering every Easter my mother and I divide up okay we're each going to do three desserts what are you going to do what am I going to do and we make sure that we've got everything covered including one at least one chocolate thing one brings the ice cream one brings the the whipped cream and you know, it's just this, it, it's really satisfying then when you're standing in front of the family after dinner and we're, we announce our choices and people get, sometimes people want to try a whole bunch of different ones, just a little slice. And that's just this feeling. It's this, it's this sense of, this is a time of choice, I guess I really want to say. And when I'm talking about a pick a card reading for in the kitchen, I'm thinking about how so many of us would be in the kitchen doing some kind of preparation this weekend. Many people would be, whether it's baking or cooking, you pick what works for you. But the card theme or the reading theme for this week, <clears throat> for this time, I don't even want to say it's for this week. It's just for this time that you're listening to this, whenever that is. Um, is about justice. This is from the, the Tarot. It's a major arcana card. And justice is all about bringing two themes in particular into a harmonized balance. Okay? Bringing together two elements. And that's what I'm talking about with my whole intro. Um, as well as this idea about the desserts example that I gave. It's about the choice. Like some days you might get up and and I found that during this time. Some days I've got a to-do list for work and I'm just boom, boom, boom. And I'm really on target. And then other days, you know, I am going through chemo. So I need to take like multiple naps throughout the day because certain times I'm really tired. And there's an old part of me that never would have let that happen. I would have been like, no way. You need to sit down and do that work. And this is the... Just like when you're in the kitchen and whether it's cooking or baking, just go with what feels right. Like it might say that much, a certain amount of nutmeg. And this is always true for me. If it says an eighth of a teaspoon, I'm like, oh no, I'm putting at least a quarter of a teaspoon. I know it's strong, but I love nutmeg. And so that's what I'm talking about. Like this is the energy of this reading to mix it up, to see how could I bring these themes together and the, the reason or the outcome, you know, the beautiful dessert that is created 
that you get to announce to your family or the beautiful you know dish or dishes that you're creating for the dinner itself um, it's it's something that's highly satisfying and it's got that springiness to it you know like getting out fresh life fresh way of being a deep breath being on the grass here in the northeast our snow is finally disappeared at least in my backyard and it's this sense of the, the ground is springy and it's fresh with all this water right now and just that springiness I just and I want you to think about it not in terms of spring the season but the springiness there's give it isn't the getting up every morning that I was talking about with my work and bing 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 you got to do that list cat or you're in big trouble I I just I don't I don't think I can ever do that again I I will have days when I can but that's not going to be a sustained thing I, I just I I just can't and that's how I know I'm allowing my springiness I'm allowing that ability to tap into what feels good to me right here and now and even in the course of a day how am I how am I feeling do I want to get out and get on this moss that's out here and have a little springy time you know do I do I want to do a card reading in the middle of the week just because do I want to give a free offering for people, you know, on my Facebook or YouTube or whatever? Um, what do I want to do? You know, do I want to work on my rug hooking? Do I, it's just what, I want you to focus on what makes you feel good. And I realize the kitchen is not a feel good place for necessarily everybody. Um, but I'm just tying it together with Easter and my examples and everything. And, and largely what we do know is the smells coming out of the kitchen very likely are very good. <laughs> so um, that I just want the lightness for this reading. And I really, I want you to feel the springiness like a sponge cake, like an angel food cake, you know. Feel that within yourself. Allow yourself to ying, boing, 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 you know. Allow that boing, boing factor. Allow yourself to say, you know, yeah, I'm going to make a dessert that I've never made before. I'm going to put my neck on the line um, and give it a go. And maybe it will be good or maybe not. But it's that sense of choice and what feels good. That's what I really want to focus you on, okay? So, the first card choice, and again, each choice has two uh, cards with it because we're going to look at the themes. Again, in the spirit of the Justice card, look at those two pillars. This is about the mixing and the mashing together, you know. This is in the kitchen. We're mixing it up. And this is akin to your energy alchemy. This is you working with your own energy here, okay? but not unlike being in the kitchen, whether it's cooking or baking. So the first card choices are from the Angel Tarot deck, okay? So first up we have the King of Air, all right? So this would be the King of Swords in the Tarot. This is about the utmost when it comes to um, our mentality, our communication ability, how we listen, how we perceive, how we learn. It's the top of the suit. You don't get much higher, you don't get any higher than this in the swords or in this deck, the air. And that's mixed with the four of air. Ha ha! All right, four of air is the four of swords, which is about taking a break. This is exactly what I was talking about. And I did not look at these card choices at all. The king of air, I just want to read you the words here, okay? The king of air, again, top of the line when it comes to communication, like such a good orator or somebody who can write really well or just somebody who knows the right thing to say at the right time and so effective, right? You know those people and you know those parts of yourself. We all have a king of air within us. It's just around different subjects um, where we're really in our zone. And it's also your ability to perceive and to learn. So it's the incoming as well as the outgoing. All right. So here's the words around this. 
brilliant, impartial, professional, diplomatic. It's kind of like I'm rising above and again, top of your game. All right. This says speak your mind with confidence. Seek out professional advice. Balance mental and emotional considerations. It's all I can feel in the energy. You can hear it in my voice because that's how air works. It expresses itself. And it's what I want to say is this part of you, for those of you that chose this, you like this is the part of you that rises above and you rise. I want to say, just like the peacock, you rise to the occasion when it comes to mentally how you think about things how you choose to communicate with people. Maybe you always take the higher road. Um, you turn the other cheek. You're just, you're, there's a strong sense of integrity here that I feel. But it's hard to maintain the king of air. It's hard to maintain always being brilliant, impartial, professional, and diplomatic. And as humans, with active energy fields that are constantly inputting and outputting, we live in a, in a world of change, in a world of expansion, and there's lots of events and people and circumstances that really test the king of air within you. That really, I mean, it would be hard to find anybody, I, I, based on being a human being, that has a moving, morphing energy field and is constantly engaging with the world to be 24-7 diplomatic, professional every single time, impartial. You can see all sides all the time and you never have any real leanings. That's hard to do. We can do it in moments, but that's what I really feel. This is one of the ingredients in the kitchen with you right now, okay? And you, you have this within you and you know that part of you. It's mixing with the four of air. And look at these horses, or they might be unicorns. Uh, yep, unicorns. Um, taking a break. The four of air is about knowing when it's time to take a rest. Knowing when you got to put your feet up and you can't always be. The king of air is actively engaged. And the four of air is saying, when do you need to pull back? These are actually kind of opposites, aren't they? It's not that active engagement, it's pulling back. And what comes to my mind here is a question for you about, um, that's been coming up in a lot of client readings I've been doing, is around spirit animals. I had mentioned in the intro about, I really see my outward, my king of air, as being very much the peacock. I've always gravitated to that bird as my outward self, okay? And then my inner self, I see as the owl. I see as pulling back, interestingly that they're both birds, but pulled back, sitting back in the trees and just using very keen senses to be aware of what's going on. And I'm developing the owl more so in this sort of what I call the other part of my life, you know, 50 and beyond. Um, and I'm just curious about what would that be for you? You know, think about your spirit animals. What would you call your king of air that's brilliant and just brings it every time when there's discussion? It could be any of these discussions or presentations or learning or listening, anything with your cognitive ability, writing, reading any of those kinds of elements. Just curious as to what that, just do it for yourself. What would that be? What does that look like for you? What animal immediately comes to mind? Because you, everybody's got a king of air within them, but you really do if you chose this. It's really coming up for review. And then what is that inner part, that four of air part, that says, you know what? I'm gonna hang back here a little bit and maybe take it all in. What is that natural inner part of you that, that knows when it's time to take your foot off the accelerator? When it's time to maybe not be right in the middle of every single discussion or learning everything you have to know about 
a passionate subject of yours or being the expert or the one people come to or, you know, the problem solver in the family. Um, this is the part that re it really rejuvenates you. That's what the four of air is about. It's a rejuvenation and both of these want your attention and to mix them together in the mixing bowl. And I really want you to think about this at least day to day, if not, you know, hour to hour, minute to minute. The, the now present moment is the best place for your alchemy, this natural mixing like in the kitchen to work is that you have to tap in and say, and especially will be powerful if you can name these spirit animals and look them up online, what the spiritual meaning is of owl or peacock or whatever it may be. And you think about any animal, it could be an ant, it could be a wasp, it could, anything that comes to mind, whatever comes first, that's it, okay? So that will be make it more personal for you, I think. And to just then notice, even especially like I, th I find it powerful in an hour to hour kind of a time frame, like where am I at? You know, do I, do I want to keep going on this or do I need to take a break so I can come back and be refreshed? You know, and is there something I could do in that little break time that would make me even more engaged, allow my king of air, let's say, to come forward? in a more engaged and meaningful way. Um, so these are all things to be thinking about. These two elements being at the top of your game when it comes to your mentality, your communication ability, your learning ability, your listening ability, really being on it, you know? That part of you with the rest with knowing, okay, I need to take a break. And that card, I didn't read it to you. It says time to rest or take a vacation. Allow more time before making a decision. Meditation may provide answers. It's getting quiet. You know, for me, this equates to the owl up there in the tree, hanging out, getting the lay of the land. What's going on out there? Is it safe for me to fly in and get that bit of food that I see? Um, for my evening meal or is it do I want to hang back and continue to just look at what's going on um, it's really more perfected timing rather than always having to be full throttle in it okay so I hope that makes sense it's the mixing of these two and only you are gonna know again if you can get as moment to moment as you can um, and for a lot of people, hour to hour might be a better uh, structure, possibly. Um, but just to know where you're at and, and that these two, what I really want to express is these two don't have to be mutually exclusive. You can mix the two together quite easily. You can be engaged and yet not like totally owning every bit of a conversation. You can pipe in like the owl would go down, swoop down if it were time, but it might not be, you know, you might, you might not be ready to give your expression to something. So the two can work in tandem. And that is what brings you this springiness that I was talking about in the intro. It gives you just more freedom. It gives you the solace and the rest, but also that sense of accomplishment in being engaged with your life. Both of those things are necessary and they feel good. And that's my hope with this reading, to feel good, okay? All right, the second card set is from the Flower Therapy deck. Okay, if you chose this, so card number one is the Bleeding Heart, Emotional Healing. All right, and this says it's safe for you to let go of old emotional pain. By doing so, you allow your heart to mend. And the second card is the Lotus, chakra clearing. All right, cleansing. Can't tell, I guess I'm, there we go, that's better. Um, this says, by clearing your chakras, you open yourself up to profound wisdom. 
Okay. So emotional healing. Um, I know this is really probably might take you by shock, but it's coming up and it happens every time I pull this card. When I look at this, what I see is these women with like 50s bouffant hair that just happens to be hot pink. <laughs> and what I want to say about that, the reason in each reading it's a little different, but it, as a reader, I pick up on it because emotional healing is very heavy. And what I'm feeling is we're in the kitchen, one of your ingredients is like, I gotta get through this pain. And we all have that part of ourselves, like, you know, your Chiron moment where you're just the wounded healer, you know, and, and it's so, um, you're thinking about all the situations where you've been done wrong or if this hadn't happened or, you know, why have I, why is this happening in my life? Or, you know, some, you're already in a, in a place that doesn't feel great and then more gets lumped on it. And believe me, it, it becomes a downward spiral. And so, and two, the name of this flower is Bleeding Heart. <clears throat> and as a reader, and the way my energy is woven together, every time I see this card, it brings this lightness. It brings this... But remember, the bouffant girl is in there, you know? Or you could be, you could, if you're a male, you could have the Ken hairdo that happens to be like either hot pink or, you know, icy blue or something, royal blue. Um, it's when you get in that place, okay, the, the go to reaction is very much a pulled down sort of feeling. It's a, like, I really need to heal this within my heart. I need to go see a therapist or I need to go see a healer of some sort or get Reiki. And I'm not discounting those services. But I'm, we're focused here on your mentality, your perspective. All right? So you're in the kitchen and of anything that you could grab, you know, instead of grabbing the maple syrup that you grab the molasses which is a lot thicker and stickier and definitely has a different taste and it's you know it's that sense I what I get here is momentum that the momentum is slowed down so to work with you know anything that you've got going on that is this emotional healing and I think all of us have got this going on with this pandemic time frame right now um, it's a really weird time we're locked in with our families all the time um, and even in the best families that are so functional and love each other so deeply the, I mean you know you're together 24 7 and uh, that can be very trying for people and you can see sides of each other that perhaps you haven't seen before or haven't wanted to take notice of before. Um, a lot of clean out happening in, in homes or, um, you know, with cleaning out of closets and, and just stuff that you've accumulated. All of this is what's coming up with this card. It, this is all happening now and it is cleansing and, and lightening the energy in the house. And a lot of people on the planet are doing this right now because they don't, you know, they're kind of stuck. So they're taking the opportunity to do some of these projects. And in that cleansing out process, there's just a, there's a lot of sludge that comes up energetically. All right. I just want to say it's energetic and I don't want you to get into this place of you know, beat yourself up at all around any of it. Even if you're like, oh my God, my kids, I'm, I'm seriously going to strap them into their closets and not let them out for two weeks, you know, or whatever it may be. I just, yeah, there's a lightness that's wanted here, okay, for you to play with in the kitchen. You know, if you need maple syrup, 
then maybe you're going to work with agave, if that's the way you say it. I've never used it. Um, or some other type of, you know, possibly honey or something. You're going to work with different substances that are more along the line of maple syrup, but not like, oh, you know, where you're, you're notice if you're ratcheting the energy down. And to me, that would be the example I have is going from maple syrup to molasses. I mean, the taste is totally different. The texture of it's different. The color of it is much deeper with molasses. Um, and, and just the product is not going to be the same. It's yummy in its own right, in its own recipes. But just to notice, I mean, what I feel is this boom, 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 boom. It's like an engine that all of a sudden just ratchets down. It's like going from fourth gear in your car, boom, down to first gear. That's what I'm feeling. And just ask, where's my bouffant girl? You know, keep it light, keep it light. Because I feel like something in your energy is wanting to, it's, and once you get in that spin, like energy going down a drain, I so get this right now. Um, it's really hard to pull yourself out of that. And I just, I just want to, I, I want to offer you my my understanding of that. I, I, I understand you. I understand that energy. It's hard to pull yourself out of it. But still, you can see the bouffant girl. She's there. And just to say, you know, is this just a matter of me picking something different in this equation that I look at and I think, oh, the healing, my... My heart, why me? Poor me. We've all got that in ourselves. There's nothing to be ashamed of in saying that. It happens. But it, there is a light element that wants your attention. Like the bouffant girl. It doesn't, she doesn't want to be seen as a bleeding heart. She wants to be seen as a really hip 50s girl who could easily be in the B-52s singing Love Shack, you know? I mean, th that you can shift yourself if you think about the ingredients thing that I said. I try to make, I try to bring some examples into this. It's just a matter, it's a perspective thing. You know, you can look at this and see bleeding hearts or every time you see bleeding hearts now, you're gonna see Buffant Girl. And I'm like, yeah, I wanna see Buffant Girl. I don't want to lament over my bleeding heart. And I definitely get those parts of myself, and I know you do too. But it's perspective change. It's knowing, when do I pick the molasses? When do I pick the maple syrup? Do I want to try something completely different? Maybe I don't want to make something with a sticky substance in it. Maybe I want the angel food cake with light, fresh berries on it. You know, it's a matter of perspective. Do I focus on the bleeding heart or bouffant girl? Okay? So that's just one element. <laughs> I just really wanted to nail that down. But it's all in, per you know, what you're doing. The way that this is naturally mixing together without me even thinking about this second card is the chakra clearing, the lotus, is all about this opening to other perspectives. The chakras are spinning energy centers. Um, we traditionally look at seven of them in the body, ranging from the top of your head to the base of your spine. And more and more, I'm not really seeing those um, intuitively as separate. I'm seeing them kind of woven together like a rainbow bridge of sorts um, throughout your system. I don't find it helpful to like focus in on one of them. And the thing is, is, you know, if you're opening up your perspective, if you're just like the lotus flower, it comes up out of the mud, out of the mud, the emotional healing, this really, think about that molasses I talked about. It's really stodgy and thick and it's so hard to pull yourself out of that kind of energy as if you were bathed in molasses okay it's a good way to think of it and 
by allowing yourself that perspective change, mix these two up, then out of the mud comes the lotus. That's where, that's what happens with that flower. This beautiful, beautiful piece of God's art, you know? And each of the chakras is traditionally seen as a lotus. It's often depicted that way. And so many petals in a lotus, meaning so many perspectives. If you will but just leave the molasses behind for another recipe at another time where that makes sense and it's so on target and tastes so good in its own right and instead you choose something lighter. You're working these two together, the bouffant girl, this sort of perspective, the bouffant girl allows you to open up those petals. It's just like, you know what? It's okay for me to not use the molasses in this because you know what? It's not gonna taste good anyway. This reading is about what is it gonna take to make you feel good? And I'm talking on a day-to-day -day basis and in some cases, hour to hour, minute to minute, very much in the now, and noticing, am I, am I stabbing my, my bleeding heart over and over again? Or am I allowing in this bouffant girl? You know, she's right there and she is full of fun. And she can offer you a different perspective. This is something you can ask for within yourself. Bring me bouffant, girl, because I want to open up the petals. This is literally opening up your energy field. I want more petals, more choices. I want to look up from watching, being looking down at my heart, and I'm just plunging it in. The more I just keep thinking about, oh, woe is me. And I so get that. I'm, I've, my heart is with you on that. I'm not dismissing it. But there are other choices, no matter what's going on in your life. And this bouffant girl is not to be dismissed. She is full of fun, and she can have you in stitches with the different perspectives. Just like when I held this up and I thought, people are going to think I'm so rude. But here we are, emotional healing and bleeding heart. And I'm like, nope, I see the bouffant girl, you know. I can't take this card seriously. And that's exactly what the message wants to be. That there are other opportunities, just like when you go in the kitchen, you can choose however you want to put those ingredients together and whatever recipe you're in the mood for doing, it's your choice. Open the perspectives, those many, many petals of your energy. There's so much more available. And the bleeding heart is an easy one to go to, but it is thick and it is, there is tremendous downward spiral momentum with it. And I just feel like that, that wants an upgrade for you. The bouffant girl or Ken doll wants to come in and wants to have a say, wants to show you something else, give you something to laugh about, make it light, okay? I hope that's helpful. All right, the last card set is from the Secrets from the Mystic Grove. And many of you know I really adore this deck because I love the artwork and I love the color. So first card up is number 37, Serenity. Got beautiful um, uh, fuchsia plant blossoms here with a beautiful bluebird. This is compassion, acceptance, contentment. Very calm energy. I, I feel the shift from the last card set. Vom. <laughs> I feel this like it's all going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. I just really want to say that to you. And this little blue birdie is speaking in your ear right now. And um, just Just forward looking ahead. Um, there's no sense looking back is what I'm hearing. And just to be in this moment as much as you can. 
I feel a sense of overwhelm um, with any of you that have picked this card. That's what I'm, I'm picking up on energetically. And yet the energy of the card, the invitation is, oh, it's very even. And, and just, I love the word contentment. I just think it's just the best word. I love it. Because to be content is to look around at all of the parts of your life and to just say, I really have such a beautiful life. I have done so much. This is all of my construction. This is all of my effort that I have put into my life in terms of relationships and home and work and um, money and possessions and pets and every, every part of it. And your connection with the earth, your connection with animals, with spirit, your own soul. Um, these are all things to look to just to pay gratitude for the, the serene sense of contentment. It's just really being happy with where things are at. And again, that's my intent with this reading, is just wanting so much to give you a feeling of, of feel good and not to put, you know, makeup on a pig. I know this is not an easy time, but it is that there are many, many things in your life going really well and we tend to not look at those because of just how we've all been trained as humans. We've been trained for expansion. We've been trained that you gotta be better. You gotta achieve more. Don't you want more? And we take very little time, if any, to look at the many things that are going very well. And that most of all, what I wanna say is these are a product of your, your fine craftsmanship work. And it, it also doesn't mean that everything has to be perfection. There is beauty in some truths coming forward in perhaps a very difficult way in relationships. And that's not always pretty, but it does take some, some skill, your fine craftsmanship to say, I'm upset about this enough that I'm gonna bring it up and we're gonna come to a different place, whatever that may be. There's something within you. All inspiration, I believe, is fueled by the bigger part of you. Um, is, is wanting to come to your own sense of love and acceptance and compassion um, in a way that gives you more freedom, not less. And so, just, I'm really wanting to encourage you to to, to look around at your life, to pay some gratitude, to feel that contentment. That what if I'm right where I need to be, right at this moment, and everything is going just as it's supposed to go? That's an okay thing to think about, to contemplate. So the other card is, meanwhile, that serenity. And then look at, just take a look at this. Look at the artwork. Holy smokes, this is Chiquita Banana here. <laughs> this is number 15, seeking knowledge, wisdom, searching, learning. Let me take, give you that again. Holy smokes, everything, the world is your oyster is what I wanna say. Talk about two opposites here. We got that very clean and so chill, so serene, this energy right here. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful. Um, I, I just, yeah, it's beautiful energy. But so is this, this seeking knowledge. This is, yeah, I, I keep hearing it over and over again. The world is your oyster. And like I said, as humans, we want to expand. But I almost feel like the, the mixing in the kitchen for you has to do, I feel like serenity is kind of step one in the recipe. It is the slow gathering of all the ingredients and making sure you have the measuring cups and the measuring spoons out. It's kind of getting your ducks in a row. It's kind of looking around and saying, I'm, 
I'm just so grateful about what I've created here. And really asking yourself, you know, do you want to, am I ready to push? You know, do I want to put the rapid rise yeast in this? Or do I want to do the kind of more slow rise kind of yeast approach? You know, people do that all the time with different kinds of breads, quick breads or, you know, yeast breads that take long periods of time to rise, multiple cycles of, you know, knead it down and then let it rise again. And there's, there's just, there's a contentment in all of that. You can also think about it, you know, um, slow cooking, you know, something in um, a Dutch oven in like over hours in a really low oven versus, you know, putting it in the, um, the pressure cooker. I don't have one of those, but I, I know a lot of people use that and they're both delicious and they ha they each have their benefits, but that's how I'm seeing this energy play out. The mixing of the two. And again, what I want to point you to is the choice in a day to day, perhaps hour to hour, perhaps minute to minute. Where am I at? Or is there a mix of these two? Are we talking a Dutch oven, a long process, a bread that has multiple cycles of rising? And there's a different quality to that food, to that kind of baking, you know, or a dessert that I remember one my mom made that was just, wow. Um, so many layers of this very thin cake um, and with with this frosting stuff in between it just was wow and but the time invested in that holy smokes um, and then there's the delicious options of like I know we've all got like 15 minute meals not even 10 minutes like a stir fry that what the beauty of that is and how I see this seeking knowledge is it's this okay I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing that because I'd rather spend a longer time either in conversation with my family or we want to watch a movie and have popcorn later so I'm just going to do something quick versus this it's the difference between like McDonald's and fine dining and you choose different options for different reasons okay and that's how I'm seeing this like do I want just the serenity and just to really be content in what I have and then are there times when I really want to branch out that's what this is for me totally when I want to say yes the world is my oyster and I want to take a certain part of my life what I do feel is this isn't like going from zero to 60, you know, in, in 30 seconds. Um, this is more like finally choosing, carefully selecting something to really delve all of that gratitude energy into. These can be powerful partners together. It's how you mix them together and also knowing it's okay to pick one or the other. That's always in the option bucket too. You know, maybe you do part of your meal in, you know, the pressure cooker and then a different part of it is something that you've been working on all day. You know, you make the bread that takes all day and then some, um, and then you're, make, you're using it to make these delicious sandwiches. You know, it isn't that the preparation is, is hard or long, it's, but there's a piece of it that you really, and so much about is, of this is around energy investment is what I'm getting. It comes down to your energy investment. And please just carefully select, am I really just soaking in the contentment of what I've got right here right now? Or am I like in this place of like going gangbusters? What I'm hearing though, though, it, with this seeking seeking knowledge is it's very easy to become splintered when that happens okay so learning how you can mix these two together 
and use those parts of gratitude and contentment around certain parts of life that maybe things are good right where they are and then you you look at in, in contrast in comparison other parts and you just carefully select and say I'm really ready to make that part of my life a source of great contentment for me and I'm going to choose to see the contentment in it and that likely is going to bring a lot of these sort of upgrades a lot of these ideas um, that can move you towards this feeling of of feeling good about that part of your life that you can mix and match these together you can invite in ideas you can ask other people's opinions you can read a book you can watch a a video about any any area where you're really looking to feel the deep contentment around it but so much of it starts with you've got to look now at what you're very contented about and to pay homage to that even just to have the awareness of it because then that spurs you to want to have contentment over here and over here and just remember just carefully select you don't have to splinter yourself you don't have to be in a thousand different directions this is about being carefully working in the kitchen slowly putting ingredients together and you're coming to a place that just feels better overall Okay, everybody, there you are. That's my in the kitchen pick a card reading. So I hope that was helpful. And perhaps I will see you next week. Bye-bye for now.